Okay, so uh, we have uh, talked about uh, diode uh, rectifiers. We have been talking about diode rectifiers from last few uh, videos, and and we saw uh, uh, single pulse rectifiers, right? Half wave rectifiers, and and we discussed that one of the problem with those circuits is that uh, the current drawn from the input AC source has a DC component and and that is not desirable and that might contribute into that would contribute into saturation of your distribution transformers right and therefore uh, that is the reason that uh, uh, we have to look for other rectifier circuits which can take care of that issue so if you see a uh, full bridge rectifier circuits which uh, are the one which uh, takes care of that problem uh, let me just uh, yeah so 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 let's start uh, talking about uh, full bridge uh, diode rectifiers right let me draw the circuit Right, so let's say this is D1, D2, D3, and D4. Right, this is B in, and these two terminals here come out, and let's say they connect to the load. For example, let's start with an RL kind of load. Right, so this is R, this is L, so this voltage is v1 which is nothing but the load voltage right uh, let's try to uh, draw its waveform and see how does this circuit behave so this is a full bridge it has four diodes this is your input voltage right uh, again let's start with the initial condition that the current i1 or current i is 0 at equal to 0 right so let's start with that condition so now what will happen to the current how would the current waveform look like so at equal to 0 you can see the at equal to 0 plus since V in is positive, now there are top side there are two diodes D1 and D3. You can see that they are in common uh, cathode configuration. Therefore, higher anode potential will conduct. So D1 will conduct. Right? So let me write here D1. And among the bottom, if you see among D2 and D4, the lower potential at the cathode will conduct, which is D2. So therefore, D1, D2 will conduct and because d1 d2 will conduct uh, the equivalent circuit would look something like this right and therefore the current i you can write the equation which is uh, v n is equal to i into r plus l d i by d t right since initially current is very small your di by dt will be positive and uh, as v in becomes increases right if you have pure uh, resistance then this current waveform would look something like this right because you do not have the second term so the current is nothing but proportional to v in if it is pure inductor right there is no resistance then you can see that this current will continue to rise till this point right since you have both of these components the peak would lie between pi by 2 and pi so the current peak let's say lies somewhere in between and then it starts falling now what happens at this point now current is falling right till till this region d1 d2 conducts right what happens beyond this region you see v in polarity has changed and therefore among the top two now instead of diode one diode three will conduct 
and among the bottom instead of diode 2 diode 4 will conduct right so now instead of 1 diode 3 will conduct and instead of 2 diode 4 will conduct so d3 d4 will conduct and therefore let me call this as the input current in this case the input current is same as the current i and in the second scenario the polarity becomes the reverse right and therefore i in this is v in this is v1 so now you can see that v1 is going to be nothing but negative of v in so your equation would still remain v1 is equal to ir plus ldi by dt but v1 would be equal to minus times v in right and since in the second half v in is itself negative so negative into negative this whole thing will be positive and therefore again this full term will become positive and therefore again the current would start rising right so this is uh, 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 what would happen in this case now it may so happen that if you see just rt equal to pi plus just rt equal to pi plus although v in is negative and therefore this total term v1 is still positive but it may happen that the magnitude may be very small on the other hand since the current has already grown till this point the current magnitude may be large right and therefore it may happen that although the current would eventually rise but initially diability value may be negative so if we think that way then it might continue to fall for some time but then again it would it would start rising and then again at some point before this peak happens it would start falling right if i have to draw the waveform of v1 right then i can say that v1 is this thing and then minus of v in which is another this thing right so now you see v1 this is how the v1 waveform look like if you want to draw i in then i in would be same as i1 i for the first half and equal to minus times i in the second half right now this is the first cycle now in the second cycle the current will automatically start from the same point and then again it will grow right again it will go a little bit negative and then it will go positive and then it will go negative and then it will go positive and then it will go negative right so eventually by increasing 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 at one point the system would reach steady state where the starting point and the ending point would become the same so this is how your inductor this is how your current at steady state would look like right and this is the output voltage and now if you draw the input current looking at this thing your input current would look something like this uh, and minus of this so it's yeah this is how your input current is going to look like at steady state so obviously the uh, one thing you should observe is that the voltage right it's not going negative so that was one of the limitation of one of the previous circuit right the other thing you would see uh, good about uh, this circuit is that the input current so if you see the input current waveform right you understand that this is actually a a quarter wave symmetric waveform right uh, it is half wave symmetric half wave symmetric means that if what is half wave symmetric half wave symmetric is half wave symmetry is f of t is equal to minus times f of t minus capital T by 2 that means if you shift the waveform by T by 2 and then you invert the waveform then you completely overlap the original waveform which implies that the positive half right the positive half and the negative half right the positive half side half part of this waveform the negative half are same and therefore if you take the average you will get zero so this thing implies that the average current 
is going to be zero that means the source will not be providing any dc current which was one of the limitation with single pulse circuits right so this full bridge circuit actually takes care of that problem the other thing if you see if you see v in right instead of a single pulse now here you have two pulses two pulses right so therefore this is called as a two pulse circuit instead of a single pulse circuit this is now therefore called as a two pulse circuit so you can call it full bridge or you can call it a two pulse circuit also right okay uh, in fact we saw that in this case it came out to be ccn right but but if you think a little bit deeper then you would realize that in all cases this circuit would operate in continuous conduction it will never go in discontinuous conduction mode uh, uh, if you only have R and L kind of loading. Why is that? Because even if you remove L, you have pure R, it is still critical conduction mode, right? So as, as soon as you add a little bit of L, it goes into continuous conduction mode. So just RLN combination cannot take you to discontinuous conduction mode, right? Okay, but, but yeah, so now the next thing is, uh, what about the, uh, if you see, this is your current waveform, right? So you can, uh, see that it also has some ripple right if you increase the value of inductance right then these ripples value would go down right and and sometimes uh, uh, you would see that uh, uh, at place it would be mentioned very large inductor right which essentially implies that the current you can assume is almost dc so your input current you can assume is almost uh, square wave right why because you can assume your i to be pure dc so the ripple has become so small because of a large value of l right so this is your input current if you if you also draw the input voltage in the same waveform then this is how the input voltage looks like Right, this is V in. So we have assumed that the input voltage is pure sinusoid. The current is square wave for a large value of L. So now if you if you do a Fourier series of you write the coefficients of the Fourier series of this thing, you would see that you would not have any DC component. Why? Because this is half wave symmetric, so no DC, right? So I in will not have a DC. Will it have odd harmonics? Like let's say, uh, sorry, will it have even even harmonic? Let's let's think over it. So it will definitely have a fundamental component. So it will have a 50 hertz, right? Now the question is, will it have two times 50 hertz component and three times 50 hertz components and so on? right now if you see this is actually a quarter wave symmetric so what is a quarter wave symmetric quarter wave symmetric is a half wave symmetric plus it is also symmetric around uh, uh, if you uh, sorry so this is this half, the square wave uh, current is uh, nothing but half wave symmetric right and and that is the reason that you will not have any odd harmonics so you will have a fundamental you will not have you will have only odd harmonics you will not have even harmonics so no second harmonic and so on so there will be fundamental third harmonic fifth harmonic and so on those are the only one which are going to be present right and and uh, now what you can do is you can write what is going to be the power factor as seen by the source. So what is the power factor seen by the source? Power factor seen by the source is nothing but equal to the real power, right, upon the apparent power or the total power. So what is the real power? In this case, if you see, since the source voltage has only fundamental components, so the real power is only going to be because of the fundamental current and fundamental voltage. So you can find the fundamental current right uh, uh, from this square wave right by using Fourier uh, uh, expression 
and you can say let, let me call this magnitude as i1 so it is magnitude of v in v in rms value into i1 i1 is also an rms value right this is gives you the real power and uh, because voltage does not have any harmonics therefore it is only the fundamental current which contributes into the real power divided by the apparent power which is nothing but v in rms into i rms right here you see the fundamental component of the current and the fundamental component of the voltage are anyways in phase and therefore there is no cost term right by because cost is zero right and therefore the displacement power factor is equal to displacement power factor is equal to one right and there's only going to be distortion power factor right these two will cancel out so this i1 rms upon i rms will give you the distortion power factor right you can you can try it out yourself uh, substitute the value of i1 in terms of i rms of the square wave right and try to solve it and and you would see that you get something uh, here uh, very close to 0.9 right which is the power factor because of the distortion in the current because the current is not pure sinusoid current is actually a square wave and there is no displacement power factor in case of this circuit so this is actually one of the reasons of uh, a diode based rectifiers which is poor power factor right uh, you cannot or rather uh, uh, in most of the cases you cannot have a very very good power factor in fact 0.9 is also reasonably okay you would see some of the other circuits made using diode rectifiers with a power factor of uh, as low as 0.6 and so on right so so this is something which uh, we will not uh, address immediately but subsequently we will talk about rectifier circuits which can ensure uh, unity power factor right at, at this stage we would uh, continue with uh, with these circuits with the diode based circuits uh, but at a later uh, uh, towards the end of the course we would talk about uh, the circuits wherein uh, you can get unity power factor and you can get the total harmonic distortion value also to be very low so what is total harmonic distortion it is root of i r m s square minus fundamental component square upon r m s sorry upon uh, the fundamental component square right so this is total harmonic distortion with respect to the fundamental component right so so this was uh, till now we have talked about single phase uh, rectifier circuits right uh, let us uh, go ahead and and let us uh, talk about three phase uh, rectifier circuits uh, from the next video